A gentleman walked into the office. And he was like, wow, what a beautiful lady. Mm, okay. So I ran to church and I started praying. I said, God, this guy, I can't lose him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I wanted to go to Germany. Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so when he said that, I quickly wrote it on Facebook that, mm. whoosh, a guy just walked into my office and he said, what a beautiful lady. Okay. And this guy who is supposed to marry me saw it and he said, because of this. Oh. Then it means I have guys in Ghana. In Ghana. And because the way I'm beautiful, am I yeah. sure that... I don't have any, but I'm like, so because of that, the marriage didn't come up. I, was, I wasn't into Christ or okay. preaching or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. So I was just messing up there. Everything, yeah. I'll put it there, but it's not anything about Christ. Christ. I, Christ can't be the yeti. <laughs> you know, we can't do away with a false prophet. Yeah. You, you can't take them out. Mm. African are more ever. Ever, Jesus. So what do you have to do as a believer mm. so that you don't fall a prey to them mm. is to know God for yourself. Mm. Steady the word of God. Mm. So, more need in so Live the name of Jesus high as I fear. Oh, I need no Now, who, who is like my God? God? Nobody. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Social Path. My name is Sam, you can call me Sam Eddie. And uh, please, if you haven't subscribed on Facebook and on YouTube or follow us uh, and like us on our platforms on Twitter and on TikTok, please do it now, alright? Let's do it together in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please, did you subscribe? Alright, thank you for doing that. On this episode, we have a gospel artist for the first time. She sang this hit song on YouTube or the Facebook. It's, it's on every platform. Mala Maha my trouble. Hey, oh my God, I need to honey your feet. No, 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 no. I hope I got it right. But that song is a hit song on YouTube. And guess what? She's not just any gospel artist. She's also a prophetess called in the office of a prophet. And she's doing amazing things. Please get your popcorn. This podcast is called Podcast and Chill because we're going to have a good time. So how are you doing? I am so blessed. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well by God's Bless grace. God. So how was the drive coming all the way from New Jersey? How oh was it? Oh my goodness. I don't even want to talk about it. Oh uh, yeah? <laughs> what I happened? spent traffic? like four hours. Yeah. Wow. Terrible traffic. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, sorry about that. Oh God. So your name, Mill Anderson, is that your brand name or that's your real name? So my real name is Mildred. Mildred, okay. Mildred Addison Bainty. Addison Bainty. Oh, that's your real birth name? No, that's my husband's name is Addison Bainty. Oh, okay. My okay. birth name is Eshen. Eshen, okay. Mildred Eshen. Is it Abna Tebia? Abna, Abna Tebia. Tebia, okay. Yes. I did some digging before yeah. the show. <laughs> Okay. Abna Tibia. Yeah. Abna Tibia. Yes. Okay. So, um, can you please tell us about yourself? Growing up in Ghana, where did you go to school? Like, how was it? I mean, our, our viewers want to know who's yes. Mill Anderson. <laughs> okay. So, Mill Addison, that's my artist name. Okay. But in real life, I'm Mildred Addison Bainty. Providence, Mrs. Mildred Addison nice. Bainty. I am married to a wonderful man of God, mm. a man full of the word, full of the spirit, My full God. of love, mm. Reverend George Binti Addison. Hey, shout out uh, to you, Reverend. Yes, he's the senior pastor of Grace Life Embassy Ministry, My Ghana. Mm. Um, growing up, I attended um, Neval Base Basic School for okay. my primary. And where is that? It's in Tema. Okay. Yes, okay. Tema Newtown. Hey, shout uh, out to Tema people, yes. yeah. And I I went I moved further to in Saban Presbyterian Secondary School okay. in the Central Region, mm, mm. and then I moved from there to 
um, Cape Coast Polytechnic. Okay. I did HND tourism. Oh, okay. How was it? How was it like? Um, yes, it back was. Then? How was it? Was it was. It? it was good. I mean, I loved the course. Okay. Yes, I loved. Did you tour course, around Ghana? Yes. <laughs> okay. 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 That's nice. So, That's nice. I mean, it's fun. So I mean, I like the course itself. Mm. Yes, I like. I like the course that I did. Wow. Yes. Um. And I'm I'm among four kids. Okay. We are four in number. Three okay. girls, one boy. And you are the last one. I'm the last but one. Last but one. Okay. Yes. And how you well this? So we have how many how many siblings? A boy. I mean, we you have said just four. one one boy. Okay. And then three girls. Three girls. Yes. How was it like growing up with girls? Um, it's 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 not so much fun. Why? <laughs> you have to be fighting all the all time. The time? <laughs> Okay. I've okay. been fighting all the time, especially mm. with my younger sister. Okay. Yes. With my elderly sister, she's cool. Like, I mean, she's so cool. She's so different from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with me and my younger sister, oh my goodness, we can fight. Mm, mm. <laughs> do this, I won't do, do that. that. You have to wash the utensils or okay. I won't wash it. Okay. That kind of stuff. Yeah. And and how was your big brother? It's very quiet guy. It was quiet. Oh okay. my goodness. Wow. My brother, oh, my brother and my big sister, mm. I think they are from a different planet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I mean, you, you guys all came from the same womb, but surprisingly, some yeah. people have different traits. You're yeah. like, really? Are you even my brother? That's are you even my true. sister? Okay. I, mean, I mean, they took it from my mom. Oh, your mom is quiet. Oh my God. That woman. Oh, wow. oh nice. she has a sweet spirit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you took your dad? Your dad's traits? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Shout out to daddy. Shout out to daddy. All right, so education you were you were saying you went to Yes, I went to Cape Coast Polytechnic. Okay. That was a long time ago. Mm. I think it's 13 years now. Oh wow. Yeah, because I completed 2010. Oh wow. Okay, yes. okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so it's, it's a long time ago. Yeah. And now, by the grace of God, I'm in Lancaster Bible College. Okay, nice. Uh, here in New Jersey, yes, right? Yeah, in, okay. it's in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yes. Okay, so back home, I was watching you on this interview. You said you used to be a club girl. I'm like, wow, yeah. so what happened? Can, <laughs> can you please tell us a little bit of that? The clubbing days, like, uh, how, how, how were you doing it? Oh, my goodness. And were you a Christian back then? I would say that I was a Christian. Okay. But then, I wasn't committed to the things of God. I mean, you can be a church goer. You can be going to church. I've been a Christian all my life, if Mm. I would say that. Because my mom told me that she was pregnant with me when she started church. Wow. So, like, I've been a Christian maybe when I was in the the womb. womb. My God, my God. (laughs) I have been a Christian for a long time. Okay. But I, you know, the fact that you are in church doesn't make you a Christian. That's deep. Or a believer. Wow. Yes, because I take myself, for example, growing up, um, I'm a musician. I sing. I love to sing. Wow. So growing up, I used to sing in the church choir. Okay. Like, everywhere there is music. What church music, was that? Um, I was in the Church of Pentecost. Church of, okay. Yes. So okay. everywhere I hear music, I'm there singing in the church choir, the Sunday school, everywhere I'm singing. But I wasn't born again. I got born again in 2022. Um, 2020. Two. Two or two. Oh, wow. Yes. So you used to sing and then after I go to I wasn't club. even born again. Okay. Oh, you're not born again. I wasn't, I wasn't okay. born again, but I was a church goer. Oh, nice. Because I was okay. born into the church. Church. Okay. I was brought up in the church. Mm, mm. My mom took us to church. Mm. Sunday, you can stay in the house. Okay. You have to go. So, yes. Yes. So I was going, but um, in 2002, mm. in the secondary school, I had two, um, two of my dormitory mates. Okay. They were both called Esther. So we call them Esthers. Okay. Those girls were fantastic. Mm-hmm. Wherever they are, God bless them. Oh, yeah. God bless you, Esther. Yeah, because they were part of the SU mm. and they could pray mm. steady. So when I watch them, I'm like, I also go to church. But this experience that you guys have mm. is different from what I have. Okay. But I, I was in church. I was praying and all that. Mm. So they led me to Christ. Oh, wow. And I accepted Christ at that time. At that time. So when were you going to the club? So what the club happened? came yeah. when I completed the secondary school and I went to the polytechnic. Oh, so wait. That was in 20, 2004, 2005. Oh, so in high school, which in is SS, school, right? Yes. You... I became you, born again. Born again. And yes. then for some reason, you flipped, you deviated. And you know one thing? Okay. 
in the high school, mm. before I completed, okay. I had a junior okay. who had a strong prophetic ministry. My God. He's now a prophet. Wow. And I don't doubt him. Because mm, mm. this guy told me right before I completed school that, Sister Mildred, after school, if you don't take care, I see you falling in a big ditch. My God. If you don't take care, it will be hard. When you fall into it, it will be hard for you to come out. Mm. So whilst you've completed school and you are going out of the school, make sure you hold on to God and the things of God. Mm. It was like a joke. A joke? Wow. But when I got to the polytechnic, oh my God, I fell into the ditch. ditch. I fell into it. What happened? We want to know what (laughs) happened. What happened? I don't know what happened, Mm. but it just happened that I found myself with friends Mm. who had a very negative influence on me. Wow. You know, Mm. and I started drinking. Okay. I started going to the club. Mm. I mean, doing all sorts of things you can think Think about. about. Wow. And, but I still, I was still going to church. I was still singing. Oh, in polytechnic, you're still going to church. But it happens that in the polytechnic, I, I didn't even go to church anymore. Oh, wow. But when I come back home, because my mom... Oh, your mom is there. Because my mom, because of her, yeah. you got to go to church. Yeah. But when I go to school, I don't go to church. Mm. I was just clubbing every Friday. Like, I mean, just back and forth, traveling. I'm in school. They know I'm in school, but places that I've been... Mm, they they don't you have no school. idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you know one funny thing? Mm. Even with all that, when I come back to the hostel and I'm singing, I, 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 I do remember that one of my hostel mates, she's called Irabna, Rejoice. Mm, okay. She'll be like, and they call me yellow, like okay. on campus. Okay, okay, okay. Me, because you're a fair yellow. lady. <laughs> I don't, it was one lecturer okay. who came, like when we went first year, yeah. he was teaching and he was asking a question. Okay. So I thought it was asking somebody behind me. Yeah. No, no, he was talking to me. Okay. And I was put on a yellow dress. Okay. So when I turned back, he said, no, you yellow. You yellow. Know, <laughs> and that <laughs> was it. Yellow. Okay. And I like the name. Okay. You know, that time we had this song, Yellow CC Day for Corner. Uh, God, nah. uh-huh. Okay, okay. I remember that so song, So yeah. when they say Yellow CC, then I'll run and I'll go and hide in the corner and say, I day for Corner. <laughs> <Kona." laughs> so nice. don't day, yellow. Then I'll say, don't day. Yeah. So, I mean, that was like mm. all about it. So she would be like, Yellow. I can see something in you. My God. When you sing, it's different. That's I'm true. like, madam, please, That's true. please, please. I'm mm. not in that kind of... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not in that kind of thing with you. Yeah. Because we were all going to the club and all that. Mm, mm. And, oh my goodness, a lot happened. My God. Yeah. But even with that, I knew. I knew there was a place in my heart for God. Mm. But it's like, there was a force. I was pulling you yeah. back to the world. There was a force, mm. a strong force, I, I must say, at that time. Mm. There was a strong force because I come back and I realize that, like the prodigal son, yeah. I come to myself, I'm like, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Mm. But I didn't, ha- I didn't know how to come out of it. My God, my God. I didn't know how to come out of it. Mm. So I just left it like that. Oh, wow. So how did, how were you saved back? Because... <laughs> Um, as you said, you mm-hmm. deviated, went to the club, a lot. do a lot of stuff, a which lot. I know uh, we, we can't even say. I, I understand. Yeah. We all we all went through that. We all went through that. So, how did Jesus resave you? How did He call yeah, you back call and said, back. "Daughter, you cannot go that way." Yeah. How did He do it? That that was an amazing journey of my life, and mm. I just um. I'm so grateful to God because in 2010, mm. I completed school. I did my national service. Okay. And what and, was that? Um, in Tema. I Tema. did my national service in Accra. Okay. okay. Um, SIC. Okay. State Insurance um, mm. Corporation or something. Yeah. 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 So during that time, I think before I completed school, the mm. hostel that I was staying, the, like, let me say the landlord mm. of that hostel. Yeah. He, he, he used to stay in UK. Okay. So he has a lot of friends from the UK. Mm. So he had this um, friends because they are family. They are, they are seven. Okay. Seven, um, six boys, one lady. Mm. Mm. They were grown up. Yeah. So all of them were his friends. Mm. And they lost their mom. Oh, wow. And Sorry they've stayed that. in the UK. Yes, they've stayed in the UK for so long. Mm. They were very rich. Mm. Mm. So when they were coming to do the funeral, they told the landlord that 
they know how like mm. people want to mess up with their stuff, their, their stuff, food and yeah. everything. So he wants um they want him because he has a hostel, a big very big hostel. Mm, mm. And that hostel, if you if you live in that hostel or you stay in that hostel, so yeah. okay, like uh, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean like high time girls and yeah. so he said, Okay, gather some girls for us, maybe ten ladies, okay. so that they will do the seven okay. and we will pay them. Mm, mm. So fortunately, the man said, okay, Mildred, like, I want you to be part of it. Oh, and okay. I was part of that team. Mm. So whilst we were serving and all that, after the, I think it was on Saturday, then on Sunday, they said, mm. we did a great job. They want okay. to pay us. So okay. we should come to one of uh, one of their houses mm. so that they can pay us and then we can have um, some drinks, food with them. Mm. So mm. fast forward, I went to that meeting. We had a nice time. And then the lady, the, the only woman mm. among the six men yeah. came and she's like, I like you. Mm. I have a son. Mm. One, I just have one son. I mm. don't have any child, mm. but he's in um, he's in Germany. Okay, and I, I would like for him to marry you. Oh, okay. Because you are so beautiful. Okay. And all the brothers were like, "Yes, yes, we agree. Yeah. She's so beautiful. We want her in our family so yeah. that she will be our daughter-in-law." Yeah, yeah. So they said, "Okay." So they took my number and everything, my picture mm. to the guy. Mm. So we started talking. Started planning. Oh, we. I mean, we. Yeah, uh, well, my <laughs> to her. <laughs> then we have to get married and all that. Yeah. So we plan to get married. I think twenty eleven. Mm. We plan to get married in January fifteenth or eleventh or something. Okay. And when close to the time, you know, I was working with um, SIC. SIC. Yeah. So one of the days after my national service, they extended for me. Mm. So I was the um, secretary to the area manager. Okay. So I had my own space. Mm. I had my own office. Yeah. And I was there one day. So you were doing good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> so I was there one day and a, a gentleman walked into the office and he was like, wow, what a beautiful lady. Mm. So when he said that, you know, that time Facebook was there and yeah. I was so much like, I was so active on okay. social media at yeah. that time, but yeah. I was writing a lot of foolish things. <laughs> I know. Cause Cause right? I, yeah, because I wasn't <laughs> into Christ. Everybody wanted to be on, I, right? was, I wasn't into Christ or okay. preaching or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. So I was just messing up there. Everything, yeah. I'll put it there, but it's not anything about Christ. Christ. I, Christ got me the yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, at yeah. that time. Yeah. So when he said that, I quickly wrote it on Facebook that, mm. oh, a guy just walked into my office and he said, what a beautiful lady. Okay. And this guy who is supposed to marry me saw it and he said, because of this, Oh, then it means I have guys in Ghana, in Ghana. And because the way I'm beautiful. Am I sure yeah. that I don't have anybody? I'm like, so because of that, the marriage didn't come up. Come on, oh yes. wow! So it got me frustrated, mm. and I ran to church because okay. there was a church close to our house. Okay, okay. And this man was a prophet. Mm. He was doing this church, and so I God was be... pushing into your destiny. Yes. But, so I ran by that to... heartbreak. Yes. Okay. So I ran to church, and I started. Praying and say, God, this guy, I can't lose him. <laughs> oh, no. I wanted to go to God Germany. Germany. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, listen, she's speaking from experience, all right? In Ghana, it's a different ball game. Everybody wants to travel, all right? So please stay tuned and enjoy, okay? All right, please go ahead, Samuel. So, you know, I wanted to go to um, Germany. Germany. Yeah, make some money. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy says he's not going to marry me again. Oh, wow. So it's like my dream of going I'll to Germany. Shattered. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. I ran to church. I started mm. praying. So when I, I go to this prophet, I told him, blah, blah, blah. He said, okay, let's pray. Okay. We prayed and prayed and prayed. <laughs> this guy, like every time, it got to the time when you call him, he doesn't even pick up your oh, phone. Then wow. he blocked me. Mm. So that was a turning point. Point, my God. So by praying and praying, I got close again to mm. God. Mm. And I'm like, no, this time around, there is more. There's more to that. There is more to that. Mm. So I just gave in, and that has been the journey. Wow. God has been amazing. He has just worked with me all these years. Wow. Ha- that is, that is a amazing. beautiful transformation. Yeah. So quick one, I know you're a prophetess, right? Can you tell us, how did you identify that calling or that gift? Okay. How, how did you identify that? When did God call you to be a prophetess? Okay. Can you please tell our viewers who okay. really want to know? Because <laughs> yes. I know you are a powerful <laughs> prophetess. And whatever God. you say comes to pass. <laughs> so I want to know. How did God call you? Okay, thank you for that. You know, mm. um, one thing that is very important in ministry, and I will say God bless my husband, because mm. at the beginning stages, he taught me something. Mm. That even in the prophetic, when you prophesy to people and you tell them you are called into ministry, God has called you to do his work. 
you have to define their office for them. Mm. You need to push more and mm. ask God, what is Let's his see. office? Mm. Because you, if you just tell the person you are called by God, that leaves it. But into what office? Mm. Is the person called as a prophet, mm. as an evangelist, mm. as a teacher, as a pastor, mm. or as an apostle? Mm. Mm. So you have to pray. If you are receiving the message for the person, yeah. you have to pray that God will give you the office that he's calling the person into. Mm. So when I came back on track with okay. God mm. in 2013, Okay. I think it started in 2012. Mm. I knew I had a calling. Mm. That was more than music. Yeah. Because as for the music, I've been doing it for a long time. Mm. But in 2012, there are down the lane, I knew there was something more than music. My God. My it God. was more than just singing. Mm. So I started praying into it mm. until 2013. Okay. The Lord opened it so clear mm. to me that I was called and I was called into the prophetic. So the man of God that I was serving under was okay. a prophet also. Mm. And the Lord used him to confirm mm. my prophetic ministry. So you had a dream? You know, I've been having a lot of dreams. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. If I knew right when I was a kid, mm. if I knew anything about the prophetic, I would have been so much deep in the prophetic. My God. I used to have encounters mm. when mm. I was a little girl. Mm. Mm. I used to have serious encounters oh right even into the secondary school. Mm. Even when I went my way, left mm. the things of God in the tertiary, I used to have serious, serious encounters. Encounters, my God. I see things in my dream, mm. but I, I, I knew nothing about the prophetic. My God. I knew nothing my until God. 2015, by the grace of God, my husband started teaching me mm. about the prophetic. Because, mm. mm. you know, I used to have dreams and I'm prophesying to people in the dream. My God. But when I wake up, I pray, I don't even see nothing. Mm, mm, I'm mm. like, hey, this thing, <laughs> this is real. <laughs> it's it's yeah. called me into the prophetic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in 2015, uh, my husband, I met him mm. and he started teaching me because mm. I told him he was a man. I said, man of God. I've been told by a lot of men of God yeah. that I'm called into the prophetic ministry. Mm. I'm, I'm a prophetess. Mm. And not that I just heard from them. I, I have been seeing it in my dream. Mm. I have dreams that I'm doing serious prophetic. I'm mm. ministering serious in the prophetic. Yeah. But I, when I pray, I don't see anything. Mm. Then he laughed. Okay. And okay. he said, come and follow me. Okay. And okay. within three months, you know, somebody will say he's boasting, mm. but if you don't understand spiritual things, you would you will not understand him. Mm. There are keys. Yeah. You know, now there are many false prophets yeah. out there. So, Jesus said they will, they will come. Uh, you know, so it's <laughs> made, I mean, if you say you're a prophet, it's like people tend to doubt yeah. that, hey, really? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, we hope you are not in for the money. We are not, yeah. you are not in to deceive us. Yeah. Because looking back home, like in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. There are so many prophets and prophetess. Yeah. So how do we know which is which who is genuine you know even jesus said we should allow all the is it the grass to grow to grow yeah and at the at the harvest the time, harvest time yeah so jesus knows that there will be false prophets so mm. he said it mm. Mm. we can we can do away with the false prophet yeah you you can't take them out mm. African are more ever. Eba, Jesus. So what you have to do as a believer mm. so that you don't fall a prey to them mm. is to know God for yourself. Mm. Study the word of God. Mm. That's deep. That's you have deep. to study the word of God. Mm. Because if you know the word of God, you can even judge prophecies. My God. My God. That you are in the prophetic ministry doesn't mean that anything that you see, you have to say it. Mm. Mm. You, you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And... And we, we, you know, one thing that it, um, the church, I think, I believe that we are lacking is accurate teaching on the prophetic. That's true. We are making it look as if that the prophetic ministry is not good mm. because of false prophet. Yeah. No. Mm, mm. The Bible says when Jesus was ascending, he gave gifts unto men. He My mentioned God. prophet. My God. And the prophetic ministry, mm. prophetic office, is the oldest office among the fivefold ministry. Jesus. That's because deep. God was the one who called Abraham a mm. prophet for the first time in the Bible. Yes. Yeah. God called Abraham a yeah. prophet mm. to Abimelech. Mm. Mm. So the prophetic office has been there. It is, it is the oldest office among all the offices. That's true. 
That's true. The prophetic is older than apostolic. Yeah. It's older than the pastoral mm. office. Mm. It's older than the evangelistic mm. office. Mm. It's older than the teaching office. Mm. 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 And the reason why the prophetic ministry is seriously at attacked by the devil yeah. is that, that that is the office when we have access to the mind of God. My God, that is deep. Ooh. Yeah. So that is why the, the devil attacks the prophetic ministry like that. That's true. We don't we don't we don't take the fact that they are false prophets. Mm. And sometimes too they are not false prophets. Mm. They lack knowledge about their office. Yeah. Yeah. As a prophet, he mm. lacks knowledge or she lacks knowledge about the mm. office that he or she is called into. Mm. So they mess up. Mm. It doesn't make the person a false prophet. Okay. You know, so yeah. most of the time we'll say, oh, false prophet, because maybe the person said, um, gave a prophetic word yeah. and it didn't come to pass. Mm. Let me tell you, mm. there are still prophetic words mm. that Jeremiah, Isaiah, they Prophesy. prophesied and it has still not come by to the pass. First year. My God. Does That's it deep. make them... Does no. it make them fake prophets? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm no. asking. Does it make them fake prophets? No. No? Mm. Because there is an appointed time for every prophetic word. My God. My God. That's deep. So being a female prophetess, is it challenging? Oh, yes. Yeah, because I know you're <laughs> like, we've seen male prophets. Like, yeah. So being a female prophetess, is it challenging? Yeah, it's challenging. Why is that so? It's challenging because, you see, as women... In the society that we find ourselves in, mm. men usually want to look down on women. women. Mm. Like coming back from Africa. Are yes. you saying it from yes. Africa's... Uh, from Af Africa's point, point of, of view. view. Okay. You know, mm. they believe that um, there are certain things, even in, in Africa, yeah. they, they don't even believe in the ministry of women. There are mm. some churches back in Africa... That's true. That women if you're a woman, yeah. you, can, you can be a pastor. Mm. Mm. You can preach. You can mm. do all this. Which is sad. It's not right. It's not right. Yep. It's not right because yep. in Christ, there is no man, there is no woman. woman. Yeah. You it's know, the understanding. Yes. Mm. You know, women, we have a lot of responsibilities. That's true. Like in the home, mm. you're a wife, you have to take care of your kids mm. and all that. So there is a lot of demand on you. And the prophetic ministry or the prophetic office it's not for lazy people. My God, it's very demanding. Yes. You got to be you your to toes. You have to spend time <laughs> praying, yeah. studying the word of God. Mm, mm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Making sure that you hear from God, making mm. sure that you see. Because, there, you know, there is a lot of demand on the prophetic. Yeah. That's why people are also, I mean, forcing themselves to be prophets. Prophet. <laughs> prophet. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. So quick one. Um, how did you identify your gift of singing because you have an amazing voice. Thank you. When you minister, I mean, I think I met you for the first time at Celestine Donko's concert in New York. Yeah. And you came, they gave uh, like the last minute of the show, right? Yeah. They called you ministers All to come. Us, yeah. And when you held the mic, Wow. My God, I felt goosebumps wow. all over Praise me. God. We I, bless I, God. I went with my wife and I was like, there is something with your voice. Mm, we bless God. It's unique. Thank you. And it carries this power. Bless God. You don't have to scream. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you also stop about screaming. That's it's true. about yelling. <laughs> yeah. You just hold the mic, mm -hmm. start ministering, yeah. and that's it. It just flows. Yeah. Where did you get that from? <laughs> I would say it's grace. It's the grace of God. Mm. Yes. And the music ministry, we, it's not just singing. Mm. I believe that I am a believer of people who have good voices. Okay. Who are very skillful in their voice mm. and all that. But I don't did believe learn, so much in train, that. Like, did you do any no. training? Okay. I, I would say all the time that I, it's just anointing that I'm carrying. Wow. Yes. It is. Because I don't it even is. have somebody, I don't have a, a, a vocal coach or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> but just trusting God as uh, you know, now I'm yeah. moving forward in the music ministry and all that. So mm. I, I know with time I'm gonna have like gonna vocal coaches yeah. and all that. Mm. You know, mm. I, I believe in perfection yes, because God is, is an awesome God mm. and He believes in perfection. Mm. So I'm not downplaying that aspect, but in all that there should be an anointing. My God. Because you can have a vocal coach and all that, but if you don't have any anointing, mm. it's just like, it's, you know, this is music ministry. My God. It's not singing mm. that you have to come and show your voice and your skills. Mm. Whatever you are singing should minister to somebody. That's deep. That's yeah. true. 
it, you have to minister in mm. your song to mm. people, mm. not to come and sing mm. because you have the voice. Mm. But your songs should minister to the person. My God. So I believe this is one of the things that God has also blessed me with. Wow. I see it as a ministry. And when did you start like ministering? Was it when you were a child? You know, when I was a child, I was singing. Okay, in the Church of Friends course. Yes. Okay. And all over, like okay. I'll go for, I'll go to um, programs at different churches. Mm. I was singing. Wow. But at a point when I had an encounter with the Word of God, mm. when I began going deep in the Word of God, mm. I realized I don't have to sing anymore. Mm. I have to minister. Wow. So there's a difference between yes. singing and ministry. And ministry. Yes. My God. In songs. Mm. And I take this man, for example, um, Dunsi. Okay. Yes. He's, oh. He's not a singer. He's not a singer. My God. <laughs> he's not a singer. My God. He's a minister. Mm. And I, I see a grace on him. I see it in me. Yes, you have it. I'm so telling you. So all the time I'm listening to him. My God. Because I, I, he has something I covet. He My has God. something I love. Mm. He ministers. My God. He doesn't only voice Biasa. Yeah. But he ministered. There is there is an anointing, there is power, and it comes by prayer. Prayer. My God. You have to invest you have to invest in prayer. My God. No, you can't be a musician and you are spending like 10, just 10 minutes. Oh, Father, thank you. Then you are working out. No. You gotta pray for hours. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Fasting. Because we are seeing the music ministry as as like Quote and unquote as a business. Yeah. So I have to get vocal co uh, coaches. Mm. I have to train my voice. I have to look good. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. I, I love to look good. Yeah, yeah, you know? which is good. Uh -huh. but, uh, no, no, there should be a force behind it. My God. You have to invest in prayer. My husband mm. will tell you when somebody is singing <laughs> and a person is not prayerful, yeah. you can wait and you see. You can wait. Wow. When somebody is singing and a person is not prayerful, you can just see it. My God. My God. Yeah, we need to do more than singing. My God. Yeah. So it was just natural gifts, as it's you say. It's a natural, natural gift thing God, that gave God gave me. Gave you. And by the grace of God, I, mm. when I encountered the word of God, yeah. I decided to, I mean, avail myself Self. more mm. for the spirit of God to use, to use me. me. Which yeah. he is doing. So you Praise made mention God. of your husband. Please tell us. <laughs> our, no, our followers, our viewers <laughs> are ready to, you know, they want to know. Where did you meet your husband, Mr. Oh. Reverend George <laughs> Benson? All right, I watch you on Facebook. <laughs> Keep up with what you're doing. We love yes. you.